from Heartthrob Media TV, and I'm here with PJ and yeah. Ian from Deer in the Headlights. Um, we can see that you guys are kind of the black sheep of Warped Tour. You don't necessarily fit in with all the bands. That's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me your thoughts on that. Like, is this a good thing? Are you kind of like, this is still a little weird? Uh, I don't think we're really like worried about it being weird anymore. You know what I mean? Like it's like we've been on this for almost a month now. And, and I don't know. I think any time that you're playing in front of people that haven't heard you before and some of them like it, it's not really you know. So I I don't know. It's a, it's kind of it is kind of strange to be like one of the only bands that sound like we do. You know what I mean? But I don't. I think it, if you look at it more optimistically, I think it's fine just because, you know, maybe people are get, get burnt out from hearing stuff that sounds the same all day, you know? That's absolutely true. Do you have kids coming up to you being like, oh my gosh, like, this is great. Like, maybe young kids that wouldn't normally, like, be able to experience a band like during the Headlights. Definitely I've had some people be pretty excited, you know? And a lot of people that are like, I don't know what the hell you guys are doing on this tour, but I'm happy you, you know, type of thing. So. Well, that's the way I felt, because I have to say that you guys are um, probably like one of my favorite bands for the past three years. First time I heard Small Steps Heavy Boots. Heavy yeah, I mean, I was just blown away. Love it. Drum and Bible Times was great. Um, but I want to talk about what you guys are up to in the future, because that's what I'm interested in. I'm sure the members of Absolute Pumped on it and Hard Broad Media are going to want to know what's in the future. I know there's a headlining tour. With an awesome band from Arizona called Kinch. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Want to fill us in anything else? And uh, one of our good friends, uh, Rajiv Patel, is going to be opening the show. Um, he played bass with us on a couple of tours. Just toured with us playing bass. So I, I don't know. We're excited about that. We like uh, we like the headlining tours better. We like playing in clubs and yeah. you know, having uh, yeah. a more <laughs> not at. One o'clock p.m. <laughs> yeah, I think music, you know, is better at seven o'clock on. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Maybe with a beer too. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think something I really like about you guys is that you have a you're a very intimate band, um, and you create like an intimate experience with the listener. And it's kind of hard to do that on warp tour. It's hard to do that outside, too. Yeah. You know, like I feel like. Uh, even something as simple as like the bass just disappears when you're outside. You know, what I mean, like it just stuff like that. It's like I think uh, I think we try to not. We're just not really like a hype band in any way. You know, it's kind of like if you like our songs, then you should come out to the show and we'll play our songs and we'll play them to the best of our ability and try to have a good time. And it's not like I think anytime people are paying money, like. They don't really like need any convincing to be excited, you know. If, if they're gonna pay money to see something, then it's kind of up to them whether they're gonna be excited yeah, or not. You know, what I, mean? I don't. Well, that's kind of the approach we take. I, I don't really like to tell anybody what to do ever. Make some noise. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. No, it's just not. It's not. Uh, it doesn't like make me feel better at the end of the day to get people screaming and riled up if that's not what they felt like. You know what I mean? It's that if they're naturally like excited to be there, then that's awesome. You know. Well, let's talk about um, kind of like you guys doing shows that are kind of more in your realm. Um, the last time I think I saw you guys was with Steel Train. Mm -hmm. I believe um, you're playing like smaller club tours or whatnot. Yeah. Do you think that um, if given an opportunity to play like a big like kind of like stadium? Kind of tour, would you, would you be comfortable with that, or would you just like, can we just stay in a small clubs? Like, do you want to go to that level? We already have. Well, we did that Paramore Jimmy World Tour. Yeah, that was fine. Which is probably the biggest tour we'll ever do. Yeah, I mean, that was insane. That was definitely insane. Like, and I, I, I do like the smaller shows. I think it was it was interesting to see what that was like just from an experience sort of standpoint. But like, I I feel like someone like Haley does a kick-ass job of like engaging 7,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have shit to say to 7,000 people. You know what I mean? Like, I, like there's nothing that I want to like 
get on stage and like say to seventh other like, there's no like any sort of blanket comment that I could come up with that would like cover that amount of you know people I think so what did you I think where we do best is you know personal conversations afterward or you know just hanging out and yeah definitely more of that intimate sort of setting I feel like we do we do better you know where you can say what do you guys want to hear and you can actually hear what people are saying back and we can play the songs so it's more of like a you know, give and take type of a situation. Well, do you think that um, you guys are on equal vision, which, and I think when I first heard your band name, I was like, I thought you guys were like a screamo band or something. I was like, I don't know what to expect. And then I listened, and I was like, oh, okay, this, this is great. Do you think that equal vision kind of like um, treats your vision well? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I think they're doing the best job that they can do, you know, but I think that we are, we are like a, a weirder band, you know, on the label in general, just as far as like the, the history goes. Because everyone kind of thinks hardcore when they think of the yeah, like, you know, they, they kind of still have that yeah. stigma from when they started. But I mean, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about it. It's like, you know, they, I feel like they, they try really hard, but at the same time, like. You know, from talks that we've had and stuff, I feel like they kind of are going like, we love you guys, but we don't know exactly what to do with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as like marketing goes, or like so who our audience just is. Just keep making you know? music, you know? But it's great, because they have distribution, mm -hmm. and you know, they put money for us to, you know, be on be a, on, on tour and, and things like that. So we definitely, definitely don't have anything bad to say about them, like helping us out, mm -hmm. you know, to be a band. But, uh, I don't. I think sometimes like the type of music we're doing, it, it makes it harder to have like a hardcore stigma, you know, just as far as like getting reviews yeah. or you yeah. know things like that. So. The good thing is, is that I know the people that I'm friends with that really like you guys, and just people that I meet in passing on the internet or just in general, um, is that your fans are really passionate about your music. Um, and so I want you guys to know that. Cool. But so I came here to tell you. Good. But I want to know what. Musically, what's in the future like? Um, Trouble Blood Times came out in 08. So, what's musically in store for 09? We have another album in the works. You guys writing it all? We have a lot of new song ideas, um, and none of them are finished yet. But I mean, we probably have like 10 or 12 songs that we're working on even right now. But we just we want to take our time with it, and we want to. Uh, I don't know. I, me personally, like I, I feel like the way society is kind of going is that everybody wants everything to be really easy and really simple yeah. and like super easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's just in a lot of ways that's kind of how America's set up. It's like people are working their asses off to pay their bills, and the last thing they want to do is like get off work and have to think really hard true. about something they're listening to. That's, you know, like I feel, like I feel like people. <laughs> You know, they've worked hard and they've tried to do something all day and, and usually, you know, what ends up succeeding monetarily is, is uh, stuff that's easiest to understand, you know? But I, I think, like, for us, it's like, that's just not really our personalities. And it's not, not like we're trying to be difficult, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, we want to put together a, a piece of art and uh, something that's take some concentration, which might not pan out as far as like getting 5,000 people to your show, you know what I mean? But I think, I think that's fine, you know? I, th I think like everyone is really their own measure of, of success and, you know, it's just, it is what, whatever you want it to be. And I don't think any, either, any of us are like obsessed or interested in being like stars or anything like that, you know? So. Those are very modest. We're doing the headlights. And this is Heartthrob Media TV.